Man, you may be cheated. And we were preparing to go before the throne of grace. I asked this morning that as I played that you also pray. For God the other words of all the prayer that we can muster on this earth. Father God, we want to thank you this morning Lord, for the blessing that you bestowed upon us, oh God. Father God, you dispatch your angels throughout this night, oh God, to make sure, oh God, that the blood lands warm. Woke us up this morning, Father God, for a brand. We had not. God, we, we want to thank you. Two generations. And his blood, we might be saved. Father God, we thank you. This morning, oh God, we pray that Father God, to, to do your will, oh God, we 
we welcome everyone to our friends and family day. Thank you for coming out and let's find a word or something to make you come back again so you can come back and join us again. Again, welcome.
Good morning, family. Good morning. I say good morning, family. Good morning. I am blessed to be able to see you, and I hope the same that you can see me because somebody don't have their testimony this morning. As I prepare to pray and intercede for those that are amongst us and those that are not, I ask of you if you have someone that you're standing in the gap for, someone that is going in Christ, someone that needs just a hug, a call. Dear Heavenly Father, the giver of all things, Lord, the, the help in the time of need, Lord, for those that are at home sick, in the hospital sick, Lord, you know their need. Meet them where they lie, meet them where they sit. Every household, oh Father, that don't know where the next meal is coming from. Every household, oh Lord, that don't know if they'll have a roof over their head, oh, Father. You know all about it. You know all about it, so, Father. Every concern, every need, every desire. Father God, the great creator, we thank you. We thank you for having a refuge. We thank you for allowing our minds and our hearts, oh, Father, to rest in you. And for those of us that do know how to call on your name, oh Father, let us be thankful and mindful that it is you that brought us from a mighty long way. Lord, somebody's grieving on this morning, oh Father. You know who they are. Whether it's an old wound or a new wound, oh Father. Heal them, oh Father. Hear their cry, oh Father. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity. The opportunity, oh Lord, to part our lips, to lift up our eyes, oh Father, to see a day that was not promised, oh Father, but you saw fit to dispatch your angels, oh Father, to lift us up one more time, oh God. One more time. Because surely we know that tomorrow is not promised. Surely we know that somebody that is laying here don't know. Don't know what tomorrow we may bring. But we're giving you thanks right now while we yet can praise you, yeah, while we yet can breathe, oh Lord, while we yet can say thankful and I'm grateful, oh Father. Grateful, oh Father, just to have the chance to breathe, to breathe another day, oh Father. That's hard for some of us right now. That's difficult for some of us right now, oh God. The leaders that is in place right now, from the White House, oh Father, to the prison, oh Father. Touch now, oh Father. Let it be something said. Let it be something done. Let it be something displayed. To let those that don't know you know that you're yet in charge. Lord, the schools, oh Father, you know the need. The teachers, the principals, oh Father the workers, the students, oh, Father. There are so many things, oh, Father, that they could be doing. The street is ready for them, but the kingdom is where we should be, oh, Father. Lord, I thank you for having a place, oh, Father, so that they can come and learn to fight against all the wiles of the world, oh, Father. We know that the battle is yours, but, Lord, we need some strength right now, oh, Father. Right now, Father, we say we call on you. You'll answer. Lord, we're calling on you right now, Father. We're calling on you in the courtrooms. We're calling on you in the church. Pew by pew, oh Father. Household by household, oh Father. You know the need. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise you enough. Lord, I pray that this service, this community, and each and every one of us.
Jesus that are set out to do your will, that we be held accountable, that we serve you and you only, oh Father. Lord, the speaker that is coming on today, oh Father, Lord, let your word reign on us. Let your spirit rest rule and abide in this place, oh Father. Lord, let us not leave the way we came, oh Father. Lord, fill us up. Our cup will run over. But I thank you for the opportunity just to say we love you. We thank you. We honor you. And we thank you for the past that you placed here in this pastor, oh Father. We thank you for his lovely wife. We thank you for the deacons. We thank you for the ushers. We thank you for the choir. We thank you for all the staff, oh Father. Because if it had not been for the love and the grace and the mercy that are renewed every day, none of this could be possible. And as I leave to take my seat, but never your presence, oh Father, we ask you, oh Father, to continue for your grace and mercy to reach the places that we can. But your love is everlasting, like your blood. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And even as I look on your program today, it says family, faith, and friends. For these we give thanks. And truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. He told us to rejoice and be glad in it. And so we don't just rejoice because of what he gives us, but we rejoice because of who he is. And for him to allow us to be a part of this day every day, you know, he wakes us up. And a lot of times people take that for granted. They have so many things that they have on their list to do. But we are grateful for God just waking us up, breathing on us this morning. So I'm grateful today. And, and so as I stand this morning, I just want to give honor to God and to the leaders of this precious house. And just for your kindness, even when we walked up on the outside and people were coming in, they were speaking and saying good morning. And, you know, that's just a blessing. You know, the, the heads weren't down, but the heads was lifted up. And so I'm grateful to be here to share with you all today. And um, as I um, stand to introduce my sister, I am, we are a family of eight, our mother and our father, um, they were passed away years ago. Um, but our home was a, it was a house of love. Um, they showed us love. They didn't particularly say it, you know, words every day that they loved us, but we knew without a shadow of doubt that they loved us because of the way they served us, because of the way they lived in our home. We saw them praying. We, we heard them praying, and we saw them reading the word of God. And, you know, that's a blessing. You know, that's a blessing in this day and time. Even as we look back over our lives, we know that without a shadow of doubt that our mom and our dad taught us the way of God. And so as I stand to, produce, to introduce my sister, Daphne, just giving a little background about her life, she's always been one that, you know, that loved God. And she's lived a life before us, her family and her friends, to show that she served God with all her heart. She's genuine in what she does. Even her, the ministry that she is a part of is the women that are in love with Jesus. And she has a heart for women, especially those that are, have been hurt or, you know, have struggled. You know, she shows them how to just be strengthened, most of all, by the word of God. And then, you know, with, and being confident within themselves. So I'm just honored that she had asked me to come and to, to um, speak or to say a few words um, to introduce her today because she is a woman of God. And when she first texted me, I, I said, well, girl, I don't know about that. You know, I got to think about that. But as I was listening to the word of God this morning, and it talks about being confident and how we have to see ourselves from the eyes of the Lord. Now, a lot of times, even the things that we have difficulty in, we may feel weak in, but we still have to pursue God and look to him because he is the strength. He is the giver of life. And, you know, we can't be fearful because that's a trick of the enemy. It's a distraction. So when we are confident in who God is in us, because we carry him every day, he lives on the inside of us. And so we are confident because of who he is in our life. So I, I text her back this morning. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> and so I'm glad that I'm here today. So I have been blessed. 
I have been blessed by your words and by your singing. This morning, even the song when she was singing, I'm on the Lord's side. And then even the next song said, praise him. So if we, we are on the Lord's side, we truly can praise him. So I stand today to introduce, to present to some, to introduce to others, my sister, Minister Jacqueline George.
he's able. You wonder why some have gotten a little excited about that song? Because they understand that God is able. That he can take a situation that looks impossible and he can turn it around. He's able. That relative that may be in the hospital that looks pretty bad, God is able to turn it around. That wayward child that you've been praying about for a while, God is able to turn it around. That husband that you've been praying about, that wife you've been praying about, God is able to turn it around. He's able. Come on and let's just give the Lord a hand. He is able. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you so much, um, Pastor Grace and Sister Grace, for giving me another opportunity to come and fellowship with you on your family and friends day. I count it an honor to be here with you. Uh, I'm so grateful uh, that I have family and friends here with me today and I want to uh, recognize them. You saw my oldest sister earlier and um, I have my next oldest sister, Carolyn. She's here. If you can just wave. Amen. Carolyn just got out of the hospital on this week, last Sunday I believe, and um, I'm sure that she can testify today if I gave her the mic that God is able to bring you out. Amen. He's able. Amen. I'm so grateful to have with me, um, um, as my sister men mentioned, that I do a ministry um, called Women in Love with the Lord, and it's out on Fort Bragg. And I do have uh, some of our soldiers with us here today. As a matter of fact, they're very new to the area. I think they've probably been here for less than two weeks. Is that right? So it's Tia and Daniel. Daniel actually just got here this week or last week. Okay. And so if you guys could just stand and just wave to them. Awesome. So we're glad to have them with us on today. Um, God is good. Again, it is. Thank you for that choir. He's able. And the worship team, they got up early. The songs really ministered to us. And um, we don't necessarily have to wait until the preacher to get up and give the word. We can minister in song, you know, and the songs have already prepared us for the word on today. Uh, I'm very, very, again, very grateful to be here with you on your family and friends day. Family and friends. It is so important to have family and friends uh, in our lives. We can't do this life alone. Uh, it's not a good thing to try and do life alone. I just went to a memorial on um, Wednesday of this week where I had to read the Old and the New Testament of a young lady who passed alone with COVID in her house. They found her several days after she had, had, um, had passed alone. We don't need to do life alone. We need family and we need friends. It is a blessing to be here with our health and our strength. As all of you know, with all that is going on in our world today, to be able to walk into this building in our right mind, able to breathe normally, it's a blessing. That's enough. Yeah, we can give the Lord a hand praise for that as well. It's a blessing to be here on today. Um, as I was uh, thinking about your, uh, the day, Family and Friends Day, I thought about um, family. And I have one son, his name is Daniel, and Daniel is uh, at NCCU now. Um, he's also a reservist in the military. And so, um, as a, he's my only child. And as a young child, Daniel, uh, and a male at that, Daniel um, doesn't like to always out in public uh, walk close to mom. Uh, many a times we're, you know, in, at school, he likes to walk ahead of me. I don't know, something about, you know, I guess that he doesn't want to see his friends to see him hanging around so close upon the mom, so he makes sure that he walks a distance so that he would not be pressured by his friends. And so I threaten him at times because we can be sitting at the house and he'll come and actually jump on my lap. I said, okay, uh -huh. give, me my, give me my phone. Give me, where's my phone? I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to post it. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, he, he, he won't let me do that. And so, you know, as we're thinking about family and friends, you know, 
there are times when ever someone would say, and I'll take for instance my sister, Barbara Jean, stand up and then take your mask off. People on many occasions have gotten me and her mixed up. Turn around so they can see you. They have gotten me and her mixed up. And she could be out in the store or something, and they may come to her, up to her, walk up to her, and they would say, hey. And she said, you think I'm Delphine? She said, I'm Delphine's sister. Because that's not her personality. So she's a little more reserved than I am. And so, you know, you have, you know, family members that, you know, someone told you you look like them or you resemble them. Sometimes it's a compliment. And then sometimes it's like, oh, Lord. You know, we don't want to identify with them for whatever reason. You know, we, 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 want to, we want to disown some of our uh, family members at times, you know, because maybe it's because of the way they act or their personality or something like that. We do that sometimes. Um, so, but I want to talk to you today about um, don't, my title simply is, don't deny him. Don't deny him. Don't deny him. If you will, open your Bibles, please. I don't know if the scripture is up. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Be imitated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. 1 Corinthians 4.16. 1 Corinthians, and I'll turn here in my Bible here. 1 Corinthians. this translation that's on the screen and then I read it from mine and it says wherefore I beseech you be ye followers of me my translation says uh, so I urge you to imitate me to imitate me let's pray father we thank you so much for another day we thank you that we are able to stand here in our right mind, able to breathe, take a deep breath. Amen. We're very grateful for that. Amen. We're grateful because we know you and we're not ashamed. We're thankful, Father God, for all that you are, all that you do. If it wasn't for you, we don't know where we would be. We're grateful today that we're here because of your goodness, because of your grace, because of your mercy. Amen. Father, I pray that as we share this word for the next few minutes, that you would take this message and speak to every person under the sound of my voice, from the youngest to the eldest. You, you, you're, you're so wise. You're, you're sovereign. You're so good. And you're able to take one message and address every person individually. You know where we are. You know where we need to be. You know the questions that we may have. You know what we may be struggling with. You know, God, what we need to hear this day. And I'm asking to you, God, to do that today. Speak to every person individually. We declare that this word will fall on good ground. We declare, God, that hearts will be blessed and encouraged and strengthened because of this word today. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. You can have your seat. So I urge you to imitate, to imitate me. That word imitate, it means to copy or to follow. Follow someone to observe them to uh, portray them, imitate them. Uh, in our family, we are very in gatherings. We are very good for, or we have some in the family that are very, very good at imitating relatives. And so we all laugh because we know what that is just like, just like, just like that person. 
And so my parents are, have passed, but I have a few relatives that are very, very good at imitating my daddy and my, uh, and my mother, and we just laugh and laugh and laugh. And so here uh, I find it interesting that, um, that Jesus is saying to imitate me, to follow me, or to copy me. And in order to imitate, you have to observe. You have to walk closely to imitate someone. You have to be around them enough to pick up that behavior. And so the reason why Paul was writing this uh, to, uh, to the, 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 the Christians in Ephesus was because um, Ephesus was uh, uh, the most accessible city in all of Asia. There was a, a, a huge amount of trade in that city, so therefore you have lots, 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 and lots of people. And where you have lots and lots and lots of people, you know, you have lots and lots of sin. And so he was warning them to uh, to not to uh, get sucked in with with the world. Ephesus was also the place where the uh, the goddess of uh, the, the goddess of Diana, her, her trophy was, and people would come there from all over the world to worship Diana. And so he did not want the Christians to get sucked into uh, the sins of of the world. So he warned them. And so when we look at um, not denying him. Um, I was also reminded of Peter, and uh, I want you to go there with me as well, Peter. And let's go with me to uh, Matthew, the 26th chapter, all right? Sometimes, you know, we, when people give us a compliment and they say that we look like them or we act like them, sometimes, when they say that, sometimes it's a compliment, and then sometimes we look at it as a curse. Uh, sometimes we're like, oh, you know, pretty good, you know, you look like your mom or you look like your dad, and sometimes that's, that's good to you. And then sometimes it's like, oh my God, no, nah, no, I don't either. You know, we might say that. And so here we're going to see in scripture where Peter denied, he denied um, uh, Jesus. At a time when Jesus needed him the most, he denied him. Jesus uh, had forewarned him that, uh, that he was going to deny him, you know, before the cock was uh, uh, after the cop was croaked three times that he would deny him. But Peter didn't believe that. Peter, had, Peter loved him so much. He loved Jesus so much that he said, no, not me. But Jesus knew that our flesh is weak. And he knew what Peter was capable of, of doing. And he did do that. So take a look at Matthew, the 26th chapter. And I'm going to start reading at the, um, the 69th verse. That's Matthew... 26, and I'll start reading at the 69th verse. It says, meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came over and said to him, you were one of those who was with Jesus the Galilean. Peter denies it in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about, he says. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And Peter again denies it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man. He said. A little later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, you must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent. This time, Peter swore. A curse on me if I'm, if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately, the rooster crowed. Three times Peter denied Jesus at a time when Jesus 
needed him the most. What I do like about Peter is that Peter was out of the other disciples, Peter was the one that followed. Although he followed from a distance, he followed him. From a distance, he followed him. And today, I just want to give you about four reasons why we could possibly deny him. Four reasons why we could possibly deny him. If you will, flip back in the same passage, Matthew 26. And uh, let's look at the 40, the 40th verse. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. And he said to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Number one. One of the reasons why we could possibly deny him is because of our spirit man uh, is weak. We, 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 there's a lack of faith uh, because we don't spend the necessary time in prayer. Jesus warned them to, to watch with me, pray with, pray with me, because temptation is coming. And all of us uh, are faced with temptation on a daily basis. And with those temptations, we have to make a decision whether we're going to as believers, as Christians, are we going to take a stand for you know, Christ? Are we going to stand up and be that Christian, or are we going to deny him? Sometimes we have denied him, and sometimes we have taken that stand. But more than likely, when you haven't spent that time built up in prayer, more than likely, when you're not spending that time in the Word of God on a regular basis, more than likely, your, spilling, your, your spirit may be weak, as the scripture just said, but your, 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 your spirit may be willing, uh, but your flesh is weak. And, and because of that, you, you, you tend to go the route of the flesh because you don't have the necessary strength you need to, to take a stand for Christ well, you should take a stand for Christ because you're, 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 you're willing, but your flesh is, is, is weak. We, we can't have a lot of confidence in our flesh and think that, hey, we got it all together. You know, we don't need to spend that time in prayer in the morning. We run out the house. You know, it don't even take five minutes to take our time to say, God, thank you for this day uh, to, acknowledge, to acknowledge him before you get out. You know, before you start your day. And he tells us if we will acknowledge him in all of our ways, then he promises do what? That he will direct our paths. And so the least we can do on a daily basis is take the time to pause and to acknowledge him and say to him, God, this is the day that you have made. I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it. Help me as I go throughout this day. Because I don't know what the day going to bring. You know, but I don't know what this day going to bring. But I need you to help me and to guide me along the way. That's the least we can do. As Christians, that's the least we can do. It's to acknowledge him. And sometimes, you know, God in his, in his sovereignty, because he knows that we're going to face something that we're not ready for, sometimes he will nudge us in the middle of the night to get up. You're sleeping quite well, and then all of a sudden you just wide awake. Mm -hmm. And you spend time twisting and turning, trying to go back to sleep, and he was like, uh-uh, get up. Yeah. Spend some time with me, yeah. because what you're about to face, you're going to need my strength to take you through this. Yeah. And so sometimes, sometimes we get up, and sometimes we don't. 
sometimes the reason why we deny him is because of our, our faith is weak. Because we don't spend that quality time with him in prayer. Uh, and that quality time with him in the word. Yeah. And so we get weak. We get weak spiritually. Another reason why is fear. Fear. We're, we're scared. It's, it's one thing to be amongst us, you know, Christians, in a setting where everybody believes or are, are expected to believe, and, and we're singing, he's able, and we're singing, and we're worshiping because we're amongst those that are like us. But it's another thing when we get out in this world when it's maybe one of you or uh, you don't see that sister, that group of sisters, that group of men, we don't see them. It's just only just, just you by yourself amongst this huge world. And so we fear what would they think of me. We're on the job and we know that, uh, that things are being done uh, ungodly and because it's only one or two of you and one in your cubicle, uh, then you tend to go along with the world because you don't want to stand out. You want to follow from a distance. Follow me. As Peter did, he followed from a distance. He feared what man can do. And, and this is the moment, that the, the time that Peter, Peter, Peter denied Jesus because here they was about to crucify him. And he was by himself. He was not with, the, with his disciples. The other ones fled. He did follow, but from a distance. And so he feared. And that's why, that was one of the reasons why he denied, he denied Jesus. I mean, even to the point of cursing. I don't know the man. The worst thing that, first of all, the worst thing that you can do is to, to disown your people when they need you the most. You disown them. You disown them when they need you the most. That's a bad feeling. You can imagine. But Jesus knew this ahead of time that Peter would deny him. He knows, he knows us. He knows that if we, if, if we are put in certain situations, then what we are capable of doing. And so that's why he, he wants us to, to spend that time, to pray always, to watch and pray, he tells us, to watch and pray. That's why he tells us to do that. Another reason. It's because we want to fit in. We, we, we want to fit in with the world. We, we, for real. We, we just want to fit in with the world. We don't, want to, we don't want to be different. I remember before I gave my life to the Lord at 17 years old, I thought the reason why it took me so long to give my life to the Lord, I thought that Christian life was going to be boring, that I was not going to be able to hang out with my friends and do friendly things. And uh, I just, I, I mean, just all of that. And so I had to begin to pray and I had to begin to ask the Lord, please give me a mind to serve you. Give me a maid of my, and I prayed that prayer for years. God, give me a maid of mind to serve you. And what I mean by that, meant by that was, it doesn't, I, I, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. I want to serve you. And, 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 and I don't want, I want to be at a point where I don't care what anybody else does. I'm going to serve you, and I'm not going to turn away from you, regardless of what anybody does. That's, that's what I meant when I said, Lord, give me a maid of mine. To serve you because I believe, I believe that, especially if we was raised in church, I believe that the desire is there. I believe that we know the goodness of the Lord. We've seen God move. We've seen, we've seen mama pray. We've seen daddy pray. We've seen, we've seen sister so and so. We, 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 we've experienced the goodness of the Lord. We've been in church and we have felt the presence of the Lord. We've seen somebody, we, we've had the experience where, where we've been sick and somebody came and prayed and God raised us up. We've experienced the goodness of the Lord. But the, but, the, but the flesh is weak. But the spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. And so we need help here. 
We can't do this in our own strength. And we say to God, as I go throughout this day, help me to be a reflection of who you are. Help me to imitate you. Help me not to be ashamed of you. Help me not to be ashamed of you. And this is, this is, this is, this is one of my daily confessions. Lord, I thank you. I confess this because I need to keep it before me. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Lord, help me to be a light in this dark world. You and I both know how dark this world is now. And it appears like this world is darker than we have ever experienced it before. And we do need a light to shine. We need to be that light because we are that light, the Bible tells us. So we need to let our light shine. And so we have to, we make a decision on a regular basis whether we are going to um, worry about uh, not being invited uh, to the gatherings at work or we, we have to, we'll worry about, you know, not being the friend of this one or we'll worry about those things uh, because we don't want to be left out. But I'm telling you, when God gets a hold of your life, when, 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 you, when, you, when you spend that time with him, you get to know him, he knows you and you know him, regardless of what anybody does or anybody says this is for God I live and for God I die. If it means that this friendship won't last another another day, another hour, then oh well, oh well, God is you and I. Because we know that He is the best. It's not no one better, no one greater. We know that we need His help more than than our friends, although we do need the help of our friends and our family, but we need his help the most. Amen. You can give the Lord a hand for that. We need his help the most. We do. We do. The next one is, and I've probably said this already, is following from a distance. That's what Peter did. He followed Jesus, from a distance. He didn't want to be identified with him. And we are put in those types of settings where, yes, we do go to church on Sunday, yes. And we do love him, yes. But when we're out there in the workplace, or we're out there in our neighborhood, or we're out there and with our sororities, and we're out there, we don't want to stand out. We want to fit in with the world. We don't want to be like a sore thumb. But I'm telling you, when you realize where God has brought you from, when you realize that when you were not able to get up because your body was aching with pain, when you realize that it was only him that saved you from that car accident, it was, it was only him that brought you out, then it really doesn't matter anymore. You get to the place, you know, God, the only thing that matters, Father, is you. And I, I prayed this prayer for years. Father, give me a made up mind to serve you. If I didn't pray anything else at night, I will pray that and I will go to sleep. And then the first day in the 12th grade, I was in a car accident. And I flipped over several times in the car. And as I was flipping over, I opened my eyes while the car was still flipping. And I literally thought that I was going to die. I didn't scream, I just closed my eyes to die. And I know that although I knew about him, 
I know that I did not have the assurance at that moment that I would be with him in eternity. One day, you and I all would have to face eternity. And we don't know when that day will be, for real. We don't know when it will be. It could be 10 years from now, 20 years from now, or it could be tomorrow. We just don't know. I mean, that's just the truth. You, people don't like to hear you say that because they think you're scaring them, but no, it's the truth. We don't know when that day will be. We live life like we're going to live forever, but we will not be, let's get it straight, we will not be here forever. One day we're going to have to meet Jesus face to face. And we don't determine when that is. And we want to be assured without a doubt that if this is my last day, my last breath, my last moment, I will spend eternity with our Heavenly Father. Amen. And he says to us, if you deny me before men, he says, I will be deny you before my Father. And he says, be imitators of me. Don't deny me. Don't tell people that you don't know me. Don't act like you don't know me when you do know me. Don't do that. This is what he's saying. Your friends doesn't have a heaven or hell to put you in. Your friends don't. Nor your boyfriend. Nor your girlfriend. He's going to have to last his say. We want to spend eternity with our sovereign God who, who, who changes not, who remains the same, who loves us more than anything or anyone else in this world. Friends, friends and family, they may say good things about us, but they, they, can't, they can't put us in heaven and they can't, they can't do that for us. We have to have that assurance ourselves. And so I, I, I want to take this. Uh, let me go back over the four things, remind you what they are again. Fear will cause us to deny him. Faith, faithless, prayerless life. Don't study the word, it will cause us to deny him. Trying to fit in with the world will cause us to deny him. Following him from a distance. Don't want nobody to know that you love him will cause us to deny him. Now, I know that at some point, and I can say that I have at times had, I've, I have fit in these categories, in these four categories somewhere. But today, you can make a decision because of his love for you. Peter, Peter got it right. Y'all know that, right? And for those of you that know your word, Peter got, he got it right before God. God forgave him. He asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Peter says, Lord, you know, you know it. Today, if you have fell into these categories where you've denied him before friends, before boyfriend, girlfriend, family, on your job, in your neighborhood, if you've denied him, you're shy about sh showing how much you love him. Let's get that thing right today. Hey, Peter did it. We all did it. I've done it. We've, we've denied him. But we have, we have this time now to get it right. There could be no one else better than serve, to serve than our Heavenly Father. He wants us to be imitators of him, to be like him. That's what he wants us to do. And so, I'm going to say to you, if you fell in that category, you and the boy knows. I just want you to say today, make a decision. You know, I, I, I have denied him in some form or fashion. I know he's been good to me. I know of his faithfulness. Today, like Peter did when he denied him, Peter wept bitterly. He wept. He cried. He was sad that he had denied Christ. And if that's you, you feel bad because you know that you have. You've not 
imitated Christ. You have not, you have not done that. Then today, we want to give you that opportunity to make it right with him. You can do it as a family. This is family and friends day. If you brought your friend today, you can do it, you and your girl. Maybe you and your girlfriend both have been denying Christ. Y'all can walk up here today and say, hey, let's do this thing. You can do it. You can take the lead. You can step out as, as a mother and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You can do that today on Family and Friends Day. If you have never, ever accepted the Lord into your life as your Lord and Savior, if you have never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can do that today. You can accept him. So we want to give you that opportunity. Please bow your heads while I pray. Father, we're asking you, and I speak for all of us today, to forgive us because at times we have denied you before others. At times we have feared what others would think of us. There have been times when we could have stood up and we could have said something. We could have spoke up for you, but we fell. I'm asking you to give us a change of heart today. I'm asking you to make us strong. Help us not to be ashamed. There's none better than you, God. You are keeper. You are way maker. You're a provider. You're a mind regulator. You're our present help in the time of trouble. Can't nobody do us like you, God. You are good, good God. You're perfect in all your ways. You are the only constant thing, Lord, in this world today. The only, everything is changing, but you remain the same. That's you, the God we serve. I pray that you would give those of us that have in some way, form, or fashion, denied him. Or we have been living from a distance. We have been following from a distance. Give us that boldness today to say, you know what? I'm going to get this thing right. You're deserving, Father. You are deserving. And we thank you for this. With your head still bowed, if, if that's you, and you simply say, I want to get this right before God today. Just show by the lifting of your hand that you're not ashamed. And I want to get this right today. I want to pray with you. Amen. If that's you. He desires an intimate relationship with you. He will be your best friend. He will be there for you. He's your present help. You need him. You, some of you are struggling. You're struggling, and you know you've been struggling. You know you've been struggling. You're struggling with things now. You need answers. But you don't want to give in totally. God can fix it for you. He wants to give you his wisdom. He wants to guide you. He wants to help you. Let him help you today. He wants to. He loves you. He loves you so much. If that's you, you've been living from a distance. You say, God, I want to draw, I, 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 wanna, I wanna know you more. I don't want to deny you. Lift your hands. Maybe you say like you pray like I did. God, give me a mind to serve you. If that's you, let me see you. Lift your hands. Give me a mind to serve you. Amen. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see your hands. Thank you. This is the spirit of the Lord at work. God designed this message with you in mind. He, he knew that you would be here today. He, he knew that you, he knew that you needed this. He knew that you, that you needed him. He knew he wants to help you. Don't reject him today. Don't deny him. I don't care who's in here. Don't deny him. If you're sincere about that thing, I want you to stand up to your feet. I'm going to pray with you. Don't be ashamed. 
you stand. You lifted your hands. You want to make this thing right with God today. You don't want to deny him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's still some more. You're still struggling in your seat. You're wrestling with this. Let's just do it God's way. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for strengthening those to stand, God, and say yes to you, that they don't want to deny you any longer. God, they recognize their need for you. God, we say thank you. Thank you. Those of you that stand, and please repeat after me. Say, Father, I have denied you. I have followed from a distance. But today, after hearing this message, I want to get it right with you. I want to sell, sell out totally to you. So I submit my life. Fill me. Put your spirit on the inside of me. May I be sensitive to your spirit and follow you this day and forever. I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. And I accept that in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Thank you. Let's give the Lord a praise. Amen. Amen. Listen, the best thing that you can do, listen, to be strong, to stay committed, to stay in the things of the Lord, get involved in church. Come to Bible study. Connect in prayer. Be involved in prayer meeting. Find something to do in church. Take your gifts and your talents and, and ask, ask your leadership, you know, how can I serve? I want to give God my time. I want to give him my time. And you will see that you have made the best decision that you could ever make in your life. God bless you. Amen. Thank you.
Silvestre. Now, okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, Mr. Floyd, we want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for coming back to be here with the Ben. Thank you for your profound word. I mean, it resonated with me, and I'm quite sure it resonated with the other members. Amen. And we just want to say thank you and thank you for coming back with us again. That's a small token of the New Mission Baptist Church family, and we just love you. Come back to see us again. Should have went with it. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. You can go back in the pulpit. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well. Okay. Let me let me let me start with the uh, let me start with the choir, and and they always do a great job. All our choirs do, and I and I always have to sing a little person. Uh, Sister Frazier, Sister Frazier, Sister Frazier. All of my contacts in Motown are gone now. But I'm going to reach out to someone for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. We, were, we are truly blessed today. We, um, I'm thankful for, for the choir. I'm thankful for the for the spirit of the Lord that, that, that's been here. I'm thankful for Minister Floyd and, 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 and the word that she brought. Uh, this has truly been a blessing for us and all, I'm always thankful when Minister Floyd comes. Uh, the very first time that she came to New Mission, she just, she just moved me. She just moved me and here I am. I'm supposed to be a pastor. I'm supposed to be the shepherd of this house, but she, her, every time she brings a word, it just it just does something for me that strengthens me for the next journey. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, also, uh, what you don't understand that happened here today, this was an elevated Bible study that she brought to us, and we were truly blessed. I, I, I want you to take time out and, and let that resonate in you and know that the word that she brought today, it was not about a hoop. But it was about something that we all needed, and that is to confess and confess and know that we haven't always been walking with it, but we got a made up mind now. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, we thank you all for coming out to visit us on Family and Friends Day. Uh, we pray that it's not a one time event throughout the year. We, we pray that you always take time out and we share one another's uh, blessings and word with one another. Our goal here at New Mission is to always make those that come through these doors, always make them feel welcome, that when they return, they are not a stranger, but they have already been received into the house of God, and they are family and friends when they come in that door. Amen? Amen. 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 So, Minister Floyd, on, on behalf of New Mission Baptist Church, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your, for your, for your wow, thank you for your spirit, for your message. Thank you for your calm presence that you bring about when, when, you, when you come through those doors. And just thank you for letting God use you. Amen. And as I said the first time that you came in, I'll keep saying it. The door is always open to you. You are, you, you are a part of New Mission. Amen. Amen. And as she prepares to do the benediction and, and the... Uh, And the prayer over the food. I want to say that uh, I want to say that uh, you know I'm from the country, deep country. No cell phone service. And the way we do it in the country is we always let the guests go first. Is that all right? Yeah. We always let the guests go first. Amen. So if just for some reason you get short a chicken leg, don't don't get upset about it. The guests got it and gone. Amen. <laughs> but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. So uh, 
I could stay here all day, but I know we got to go. But I promise you, you'll be back. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Um, I just want to say thank you for that welcome. Um, when we came in, I mean, from the moment we hit the parking lot, we there was such hospitality, such welcome. And, I mean, not just the ushers, but everybody was just so friendly. This is how you want to, to do when you, people walk in your church that have never been here before. And I will be back, you know. There's some churches that I walked in, it's like, oh, my God. I mean, it took you, nobody hardly spoke to one another, you know. So, but you guys, I thank you for the love that we have felt since we've been here. And um, we pray that um, something was said today, I believe that it was, that uh, encouraged you on your journey on this Christian walk. So with that in mind, we, you can stand and we're going to do the benediction. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you so much for your sons and your daughters that are here today. And thank you for the shepherd of this house. Thank you for the, the spirit of humility. Thank you for the love for you, the love for your word, the love for your presence. Father, we ask that you will continue to build this congregation. Continue, Father God, to endow God. Uh, the pastor and his wife and the elders, the minister with wisdom. Father, we pray that you will continue. Let the love of you prevail in this house. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. And we thank you so much for those that uh, have rededicated or committed their lives to you this day. We pray that those decisions, Father God, the enemy will not take them away when we walk outside of these doors, but the commitment will last forever. Father, bless your people. Bless the food that we're about to partake of. Father, we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And please say after me, may the Lord watch between me and thee while we absent. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Thank you.